Hello, my name is Judy Bailey, and I live in Tallahassee, Florida with my husband, Don. And I wanted to share with you our story of Medjugorje. And part of what I'm gonna share with you today is honestly how we ended up in Medjugorje to start with, because that in and of itself is a miracle. Uh, both of us have been brought up in the Baptist church. We knew nothing of, uh, we knew very little about the Catholic faith. Uh, and had never heard of this little tiny village of Medjugorje. Um, but what happened was we had um, been dating for a number of years and we were, getting, we were getting married. This was in the first year of our marriage. And we knew that we were ready to go ahead and start having children and, and have a family. And so within a very short, short time after we were married, I became pregnant and um, Sadly, I had a miscarriage. And then again, not too long after that, I was pregnant again. And sadly, I had another miscarriage. And this happened three and four times during our first year of marriage. And each time it happened, uh, I was just, I was so sad and so scared and so distraught because having children was something I really wanted and being a mom was something that I, I'd always dreamt about. Um, you know, starting and having my own family. And so the doctors were doing everything that they could and I was following their, all of their instructions to a T. And I had no issue with getting pregnancy, but it was just sustaining the pregnancy. I, so it, it really began to look like, and I could tell with the doctors that they were concerned as well. Uh, and it might be that I might not ever have children. And with that, I was really, um, I don't need, just in a very, very distraught, dark place. Um, you know, I was brought up going to church and I believe, had believed in Jesus um, from a very young age. Uh, but you know, like a lot of people in college, I got far away from my faith. And then as I graduated and started a career in my young adulthood, um, I really wasn't going to church that often or pursuing anything of my faith and had gotten really far away from God. But I guess during this time of distress, I, was, I began to turn to Him again and seek Him uh, to help me, to help me sustain the pregnancies, to help me have a family. And every time I had a miscarriage, I just grew darker and darker in despair and feeling like my prayers were not being heard, they were not being answered. And in this, I really had a crisis of faith as I began to wonder, like, is everything I believed even true? You know, is Jesus truly the Son of God? Maybe he was just a prophet. Maybe he was just a very good man, a great teacher. And then when I was praying to God, it was like, I don't, I don't feel God. I don't, I don't sense that he's with me. And I, my prayers are not being answered. And even if he's hearing my prayers, he certainly, he's not answering them. And with that, I began to question everything. And I remember getting to the point where I said uh, this desperate prayer and I looked up and I was like, God, if you are real, if you want me, you have to come down here and show me. You have to show me you're real. You have to show me that you care and you have to show me that you want me because I'm doing everything and I just don't know what I believe anymore. And with that, I decided, I've got to quit worrying about this. I've got to pull myself out of this place of darkness that I'm in. I, I need to go back to work, throw myself back into work, and get on with things uh, because I, I just couldn't stay in this turmoil that I was in. And it wasn't about, oh, maybe it was a week or one week later that someone from my office came in to ask for time off. And when she did, I was like, of course, you've got the time. Where are you, where are you gonna go? And I could tell she was very hesitant to share with me where she was going. But eventually she kind of said, well, I'm going to this little village in uh, Yugoslavia. This was back in 1990 when Yugoslavia was still a country. She said, my mother wants to go. A friend of hers went to this little village called Medjugorje. And my dad doesn't want my mom to go by herself, so he's sending me with her. And she's supposedly, you know, the Virgin Mary is appearing there to these six children. And I didn't know what to make of that. I'd never heard of this. And I remember we were walking to the to get coffee and I said, well, you never know. And that was it. So in a few weeks she did go, she left. And while she was away, I had this, this dream that was just incredible. It was like a very, very vivid, colorful dream, but it meant absolutely nothing to me. Um, 
but what it, I what was in my dream, I saw these people, just hundreds and hundreds, thousands maybe, going up this mountain. And the mountain had all these very, very sharp rocks on it, and it had deep, long thorns on it. And all I could see were people there from their knee down, their feet, and I could just see really their shoes. And I could, they were, I knew they were like loafers and tennis shoes and sandals and boots and um, even bare feet. And intuitively, somehow in my dream, I knew that these were people from all over the world. And it's one of those dreams that just like you wake up and you go, that was weird, what was that? But yet it means nothing to you, so you, you forget about them. And I pretty much, after that, had kind of forgotten about this dream. Well, Terry goes over and on her first day back in the office, I see her in the afternoon and I'm like, hey Terry, how was, how was your trip? And she's paused in my office for a few months and she said, well, it was incredible and I really wanna tell you all about it, but I don't wanna to talk to you about it here at the office. Would you come by my house some afternoon after work and, and I can just share with you everything that happened? And I was like, of course I can do that, you know, Terry, I, I can come by your house. But she had never invited me to her, her house before. We weren't really friends. And I was very curious or perplexed about why she couldn't share anything at the office. And so I asked her, you know, well, sure, I can come over, Terry, but, but why? Why can't you talk about it here? And she just started tearing up and tears rolling down her face. And I was like, Terry, what, what is going on? Come into my office. So she did, she came into my office, she shut the door. And we were in there the next three hours where she began to tell me everything that had happened to her on her trip while she was in Medjugorje. Um, she experienced some incredible miracles. And one of the things she was telling me about was going up this mountain with this rocky this rocky hill and the, it was called, and she was telling me it was called Cross Mountain. And I had to stop her in the middle of it. I was like, wait, wait, let me tell you about my dream. So I started telling her about the dream I had. And she said, you very accurately described that Cross Mountain. But people are there from all over the world and they go up barefoot in every kind of shoe you can imagine. And so she continued to tell me more, And but she, the most significant thing that she shared with me, at least, as it relates to my story, is that she told me about this one evening where one person, a woman in her group, had felt like she just needed to be down at St. James Cathedral, which is in the center of Medjugorje. And so Terry and another woman decided that they would go with her. And as they were going, she was just telling them she just how she felt pulled to be there and she needed to be in the church and she needed to be in this room that was to the right of the altar. So when they got to the church, they were about to open the door and they were greeted by these sisters who had been cleaning the church. And it was 11 o'clock at night, so it was very late. And they were tired and they said, we're really sorry, but we've been cleaning, it's late. We have to light the door, you'll, you'll just have to come back tomorrow. And so they, they, they light the door and left. Well, the woman who had felt called down was became very sad and upset and was crying and um, just sobbing because she said, I've got to be in that church. I've got to be in this room. She didn't really know why. She just felt called there. And so the woman from my office, the other woman suggested, let's walk around to the side of the church where that room is, uh, if you feel this strongly about it. So they did and they walked around and there was a window looking into a room and there was a, a bench at the foot of the window. And the woman who was crying sat on there and on the bench and, and continued crying and just feeling just like I've got to be in this room. While well, the woman from my office and the other woman got up and peered into the window. And as they were peering in, peering into the window, it filled up with a cloud. And out of the cloud came the Blessed Mother and began to speak to them. And they were like to the other woman, get up, get up, you have get up. So the three of them are there now, peering into the window with the Blessed Mother speaking to them, not audibly, but in, interiorly, but they all heard the same thing. And she shared with them, she said, first, I'm, I'm so happy to see you as my children from the West. Um, my children from the West have, been, West have been so blessed by God, but they have now forgotten Him. 
They've forgotten that their riches and all their all the things that they have came from God and they think they created them themselves. And I'm here because I brought my son into the world as a babe once, but I'm here again to bring those people who are seeking him closer to him before he comes again. And then she turned to the woman in my office and began to give her some instructions. And she told her, he said, you know seven people who are searching for my son. I want you to go back and ask them to come to Medjugorje with you um, in August of that year. And in the week in August, was gonna, it was the week where the Assumption of Mary falls. And so I know the woman from my office was like, not arguing with her, but she said, Blessed Mother, that what if they don't believe me? What if they don't come? And she said, it's not up to you. All you're to do is to deliver the message. And so with that, Terry is sitting in my office telling me the story. And then she looks at me and she says, Judy, she gave me your name. And with that, I don't know how to explain it other than just the Holy Spirit quickened my heart and everything, every doubt that I had was gone. I knew God heard my prayer. I knew he had given me the dream to help prepare my heart to listen to this, what Terry was gonna be sharing with me. And I knew I was gonna be going to Medjugorje even though I didn't know how. Uh, I knew if the Blessed Mother had said this, that I, that was an invitation that I was not gonna refuse. So with that, somehow we ended our conversation. Uh, I walked out, I walked in my car and I was all the way home just thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait to share this with my husband. I can't imagine what he's gonna think. And so when I did come in the door, I mean, he could, he could see something was on my face and I told him, I have got to talk to you. And so we sat down on the sofa and I began to tell him everything that, that Terry had shared with me. And the first question he asked me was, are you going? And I said, yes, which what didn't really make him happy. And I didn't really understand what was going on inside him at the time, but this was very disturbing to him because he thought all of this sounded crazy and was out of the realm of possibility. And he did not want me to go. And he certainly didn't want to go and he didn't want me to go without him. So he was in, in a, had, was experiencing quite a dilemma. And so over the next few months between, this was in May, so between May and August of that year, we fought the whole time because he did not want to go. And the truth is, to know till later, that he was just afraid that I was gonna go and come back some religious, you know, fanatical woman that he didn't want to be married to anymore. And so I didn't really know if he was gonna go with me on this trip or not, but there was something in my heart that was at peace about it all because I felt like God had answered my prayer with what, Mary, what Terry came back from my office and shared with me. He revealed himself that he was real and that he, was here, that he did hear my prayers. I really also felt like this trip was for Dawn, even though my husband was kicking and screaming and not wanting to go and didn't want me to go. There was something within me telling me that this was gonna be for him. So we fought about it and thank goodness we had a, a friend who actually, he was a, a Catholic who we were sharing with him our story uh, and how he was, how we were fighting about this. And he looked at Don and he said, Don, if everything in you is fighting this, maybe you should question what that is and just, don't just give that up and go. Expecting nothing at all, just go and see. Just go with Judy and see. And with that, Don reluctantly agreed to go. But we still continued to fight, and I wasn't sure until he actually stepped on the plane if he was gonna go or not. But thankfully, he did. And we had an incredible experience over there and I can't wait for him to share his part of the story in the next video that's coming up. Um, but while we were there, we saw some incredible miracles. 
um, and the whole reality of God came to life for me, of his presence here on earth. Um, and my husband and I have written a story about this. We've actually written a book, and the name of the book is called She Called My Name. And if you're interested in the story and reading it in detail, you can find the book on Amazon.com, or you can also find it on Zulon.com. Uh, and we welcome you to, to get that book and read it because it's an incredible story of God's love and how he took both of us, our stories, and the things that I had going on inside of me, the things that my husband had going on inside of him, and how he wove all of this together in this beautiful tapestry. And I look forward for, to him sharing that part of the story with you. God bless and thank you for listening to this part of my story.